Hello and welcome friends. I'm so glad to see you again today. This week we're talking about preparing for winter. We are reading some Jan Bread books. So this week you may not have your, the book at home with you, but we're going to read those to you so you can uh, sit down and cozy up and listen to those with us. But I do want you, you're still going to need your lesson plan because there are a few things in there you're going to need. All right, so we're going to start by looking at our words, our advanced language. Why do we spend time looking at these every week? What do you think? Why do we look at the words that are written on the lesson plan? Good, there are a few reasons. One, it's the words that we are discussing this week. And it's important that we talk about those words and spell them and use them in sentences so that we can, our brains, you know, it can make those connections, okay? So if I had a, like a picture of a brain and the synapses, it's all these little things that are shooting around in your brain and it's, um, let's take that word out, um, it's your brain and inside your brain you're making all these connections. So when I say the word hen and I see a picture of a hen, I know, now I know what a hen is when I say, where does a hen live? And you say, maybe it's in your backyard or in a farm. Okay, now I've got this other connection where I've, I know that a hen lives either, it can live in people's backyards, a lot of people have them in my neighborhood, or it's on a farm, okay, they live outside. Um, so we want to make those connections every week. We want to spell the words together. Let's do it, let's spell hen. Let's try it. H E N. Very short word. We have two short words this week. How many letters in these words? It's the same amount. Let's count them. One, two, three. Good. So this is a three letter word, hen. Okay? Uh, and a hen is a female bird. Okay? Uh, the female hen, and then you have the rooster makes all the noise, that's the male bird, okay? We don't have that word today, but great word, rooster. Okay, so the hen, we're gonna see, it, we, we spelled this word today because it's in our, in our book. So we're gonna talk about that word when we get there today, okay? All right, the chicks, these are the baby birds, okay? C, H, I, C, K, S. Good. Very good. Chicks. Okay. Those are the babies. So, do you think we're going to see this word and pictures of chicks in our books today? I hope so. I hope we do. Okay. And hat. Hmm. wonder why we're spelling hat today. If you look on the lesson plan, that's the name of the book we're reading today. Okay. Hat. H. A. T. Very good. I hope you're practicing writing out these le these uh, words together. You're practicing writing the letters. You can trace them, or you can write them in the space provided there. That's a great way to practice the words, okay? Very good, and you can keep those on your refrigerator or in your workspace, wherever the kids are working from, um, on the wall there. It's whatever the parents decide, right, and the children can help them hang it up. All right, good. Now that we've figured that out, we're going to go ahead with the lesson plan. Uh, so the lesson plan today, we're doing two things. One, first, we're going to read the book, okay? And then we're going to make uh, and, and, and play a game. It's called the counting game. And we're using this uh, is in, with your lesson plan today. And we're going to cut it out, fold it up, and make it into a dice, okay? Or a it's actually going to be a cube. And then we're going to roll that cube and see which let up. Uh, letter, no, which animal it falls on, and then we will tally, we will make a tally uh, to see how many times we roll, and that animal uh, is the one that rolls heads, heads up for us, okay? So those things you're going to need for the lesson plan today. You're also going to need some scissors so you can cut the cube out, and you're going to need some glue or tape, whatever you have. You should have glue. We are sending that home some. Um, but if, you, if you've already used all that, because I know those go fast, I know that's a lot of fun, uh, you could use tape, okay? All right, so let's start. All right, here is the book 
Um, sometimes if you don't have the book at home, we're going to read it to you, or you can YouTube those a lot, especially if it's a popular book like uh, this, this book is. You can find that on YouTube. Um, but today I'm going to read it to you on YouTube. Okay. All right. So this book is called, the title is The Hat. I see here in large, uh, in large font. And I see the farm life going on here. I'm excited because I'm not sure what's going on with this uh, porcupine. And he's got, what is that on his head? Do you know what that is? Yeah, it's like a sock or a stocking or something. Cool. All right, and here is the name of the author, Jan Brett. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. We'll flip the book open. Here it is again. I love this because we get extra artwork to look at. I did not see the illustrator on here. The illustrator is the person who created all the artwork. I love that. Okay, Jan Brett, the hat, it tells us the title again. Winter was on the way. Lisa took her woolen clothes out of the closet and carried them outside. What is she doing? Yeah, she's got to dig way down into this trunk to get her winter clothes out. We talked about winter clothes uh, when we were talking about temperature last week uh, and the reason we have to wear winter clothes to keep warm. All right. So she was hanging them up in the fresh air when a strong wind blew one of her stockings off the line. See how this stocking came loose? wonder why it came loose. Good, the wind blew it. Very good. Curious Hedge found it and poked his nose in. When he pulled it out, the stocking was stuck on his, pri his prickles. How embarrassing, Hedgey thought. Oh my. So, look at all those little, his little pine cone, or his little pine cone, his little pieces, his hedgehog. He stuck it in here and it got stuck in this material. This material is what? Do you remember what it's called? It's a stocking, good, but it's made of what? Yeah, probably of cotton or wool or something like that. I'm going to say wool because if it's really warm, it's wool. The mother hen. Ooh, did you hear that word? Me too. Hen. Good. Came with her chicks chicks. All right, here are the chicks. Here is the hen. Very good. Cackle, 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 she clucked and laughed. What's that on your head, Hedgie? Why, it's my new hat, he told her. Isn't it beautiful? The mother then cocked her head as if she had an idea, and off she ran. wonder what her idea is. He said something about a hat, maybe. Hedgie saw the noisy gander looking down at him. Honk, honk, ho, 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 the gander laughed. Look at that, the hedgehog was flipped, his gizzard. Laugh today, gander, but tomorrow when it rains, my hat will keep me dry. We have another word there, hat. So what is he wearing as his hat right now? Good. The stocking. Very good. You see it here. The gander thought for a moment and off he ran. The barn cat was watching from a tree as Hedgie tugged at the stocking. Meow, he, let, he called down. What a silly looking hedgehog you are. With that thing on your head, but my ears will be warm in a snowstorm. Is that true? Is this hat going to keep his ears warm? Yeah, that's exactly why we wear hats. Hmm, purred the cat, and off he ran. Can you find the cat in this picture? It took me a second. There's the cat, so he's looking down at the hedgehog. The farm dog and her puppies found Hedgie in a patch of brambles. Hedgie, is that, that, is that a hat you're wearing? How funny you look, she barked, and her puppies yelped and giggled. 
Why do you think they think the hedgehog looks so funny in a hat? We wear hats, right? Yes. Do hedgehogs usually wear hats? No. But I'll be cozy and dry when it snows, Hedgie said. The farm dog's ears perked up and off she ran. So what keeps happening every time the hedgehog meets a new animal? What happens at the end? What does the animal do? Yes, the animal runs off. Why are all these animals running off? Oink, oink, the piglet squealed. What are you up to, Hedge? The mama pig asked, making sure my hat doesn't fall off in an icy wind when the icy wind blows up. Oh, I see, said the mama pig, and off she ran. Very good. I'm going to have you fi finish the sentence next time. Get ready for that, okay? Hedgie, what? This is a ridiculous thing on your head. The, the uh, pony snorted at Hedgie. That was the last straw. It's my hat, of course. Don't you know that everyone should wear a hat in winter when it's cold and snowy, he shouted. Is that true? Should everybody? Yeah, we should all be wearing hats. The pony looked startled. Hedgie was usually so friendly. And then he did what? He ran off. Why do you think the hedgehog is getting so frustrated? I can see his face here and it looks frustrated. Why is he frustrated? Yeah, he's frustrated because everybody is asking him about the hat and they're laughing at him. Do we like when people laugh at us because of things we wear? I don't. Hedgie just wanted to be alone. He was tired of everyone laughing at him. And with this thing on his head, he wouldn't even fit in his den. Do you know what his den is? What is that? Good, that's the place where he lives. He didn't see Lisa running after him the other, with the other stocking in her hand. Come back, you silly hedgehog, she cried. Oh no, Hedgie thought. Even the girl is laughing at me. So we were right. Hedgehog is upset because people are laughing at him. But what can you see in this picture? Is she being mean to him? I don't think so. Let's read and see what it says. Lisa called up and pulled her stocking off Hedgie's head. You ridiculous little hedgehog, she laughed. Don't you know that animals don't wear clothes? So she took one off, and then one is still down here on the hedgehog. Hedge headed for his den, and Lisa started back toward the clothesline. That's when she saw all of her missing woolens. What has happened to all of her stockings and socks, do you think? Hmm. If you notice, in the outside of this story, there's some extra artwork. And I see here a pony with a stocking. And I see over here a pig with another stocking. So what do you think has happened to the rest of her woolens? Yeah, the animals decided to take them. Oh my, look at there. The animals had taken them, and each one was thinking, now I am wearing a magnificent hat. Lisa was still chasing them when Hedgie reached his den. How ridiculous they look. Don't they know that animals should never wear clothes? That's it, the end. What do you think? Should animals have to wear clothes? No, what keeps them warm? What's their insulation? We talked about insulation before. What's their insulation? For most of these animals, it's their fur. It keeps them warm. We wear coats because we don't have fur, so we need extra warmth and insulation, but they have fur. All right, I hope you enjoyed this story. Um, and this week you're reading a lot of Jan Brett books and her books are really great and I hope you enjoy the artwork as well. Uh, really quickly we're going to cut this. This is the other part of the activity. So what you do is you cut this out and tape it together just like um, the, the, the instructions say. I'm going to do this. Um, are we okay? okay. And uh, this is nice to practice uh, cutting. 
with safe scissors. I'm using adult scissors because um, that's what I have here and I'm an adult, but children, what kind of scissors should you be using? We sent some scissors home, so hopefully you're using the child uh, safe scissors. Um, and those fit your hands better, which is nice. Um, I have larger hands, so I use big scissors, but um, you can practice cutting this out. But parents, they may need some assistance on this because cutting a straight line is um, something that we're all working on being able to do right now. So um, if you, if you, if you want to keep this and be able to cut on the line, you may want to cut that for them. And children, while they're cutting, um, if your parents are cutting this out for you, you could practice cutting something else out, uh, another piece of paper. Maybe cut an animal out that's in this lesson plan, okay? All right, so I've cut around the outside of this shape, and I'm gonna use that to fold this up. Where you see the dotted line, that's where you fold it. Okay, so we fold it. Now, this is gonna take some help from the parents, okay? You're gonna need assistance from your parents. Fold on all the dotted lines. We're trying to make a cube. Do you remember what a cube is? We've talked about that word before. We spelled it together. We looked at a cube. Good, a cube um, is something you can hold in your hand. Um, it's three-dimensional. And it takes a minute to do this. It takes a bit of concentration, so I'm trying to concentrate. I'm folding over all these little flaps here, too, because that's how I will glue this cube together. It may take you longer than it's taken me. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of moving more quickly. But we'll start here. This is six sides. I didn't say that part of cube is six sides. Look here, I'm gonna uh, glue or tape that and then the hedgehog and the dog will be side by side there. Glue that together. Maybe that, let's see, and then we'll put some glue on these and we'll fold it down in here. It's gonna take a little patience. Take your time so you don't break it. This really is more advanced, so this is a this is something parents are going to have to help with uh, because paper is a thin material, so you, you're going to need some assistance with that. Um, well, don't do the hedgehog and the dog first. Do that last. I can, I can take that apart and then I can put these pieces back together. I need to use that to notice I need patience here. Patience, Haley. Okay, now I have it, a cube. All right, so on each side you have one of the animals from the book. We just read the hat. You're going to roll it, and if you get a horse on this one, you mark a horse. And, you know, everybody in the family could play, and you can keep rolling it and see how many you get. Whoever gets to five first wins, uh, but you tally these up as a family, and it's a fun little game. You can do this with all kinds of stuff, right? But this is specific for this activity for the Jan Bread book, The Hat. I hope you've had fun and were patient enough to stick it out and to create this together and play the game, okay? And math is a really important part of this activity and a part of your day. So have a great day. I will see you again soon. Thank you. Enjoy.